Hello, we're Team 14204, the Super Screen Bros, and we are here to show you what we did during our robot in three days. Starting off, we have... Uh, Owen Ball. Owen Ball. I will go Owen first. Ball. Okay. Um, um, so I worked on coding these slides, and I got some field-centric done for this with Ben Owen's Hope, which is our main teleop. And this code for the slides should also work with this tape measure to a certain extent until I get some final code on that. Next, we have Logan, who worked on... I worked on a rotary intake. So I did this all three days, but today was the day that really I really got it to work well. Um, Noah, yeah, I'll show it. Um, Noah told, or Noah showed me um, the Go Build a Robot in three days, and they kind of use counter rotation. So it, this little... Um, I forget what it's called, but this little uh, part here, it's kind of supposed to grab the pixel and then pull it up. So the idea is that the um, pixel is going to go in there and then it'll suck it in and then there will be a ramp just after that. So um, every time we've tested it, it's worked really well. So as you can see, it does a good job of like... As you can see, it does a pretty good job of like kicking the pixel up so that whenever we eventually design like a ramp and more stuff to push the pixel along, we'll actually be able to get that, the pixel up off the ground, which is what we were kind of struggling to do for a little while there. And also, um, I'm changing the angle of this too, and it's worked with really every angle that I've done. So a really steep angle or... Uh, not a steep angle. It, it gets it every time. Yeah. Um, what I also did yesterday um, is I just started a prototype of the counter rotating intake. Um, I didn't get very far because I worked on uh, my rotary intake more. But this we may or may not use, but it was just just a concept. So. Yep. Good yeah. start. All right, so what I worked on today was just kind of testing my grabber that you saw the other day. Um, I got the other side printed with the same thickness, and it, it worked about half the time. It would grab it, but if you shook it too hard, it would just the pixel would just fall out because it's too floppy. So then I added rubber bands here to kind of try to increase the grip, but that just kept it from forming around the pixel as much as I wanted. So I just went ahead and designed a new one that we have printing right now. I made the whole thing a bit taller. I made the outside wall twice as thick, and then I added like a little ball on the end of this to help grab the pixel. And then we're printing that in elastic resin. So that should have more friction with the pixel and kind of just help it to grab onto it. So I worked on our paper airplane launchers a little bit more so yeah so I added onto it a um, cardboard back and so that the paper airplane would get pushed along instead of just being held in place that's helped it out a lot so yeah I can yeah the way it works is is the back of the paper airplane is notched into the holding area and the front of the paper airplane rests on like the front rail type assembly. So we found that a low angle for launching works best. There we go. There we go. Um, maybe a little. Yeah. So I started putting it in CAD so I can design parts for it easier. <laughs> And also during Robot in Three Days, I made a counter-rotating launcher that uses two gecko wheels and a 12,000 RPM, 1,200 RPM motor to launch paper airplanes. Um, the problem is it's really it's a lot bulkier than the rubber band launcher, and also the angle has to be put on the robot isn't ideal. Yeah. I gotta go with the rubber band launcher.
some form of it. Yeah. For Robot and Free Days, I made our new center driver. So the green bits on the bottom are TPU, they are flexible. And then inside of it, there is that cam and it spins out um, and it pushes the flexible stuff out. Uh, how it works is it just goes down into both. It picks up both and then there's like, it might be hard to see, but uh, there's a little like bit of uh, like, there's a little like hole kind of up there. And um, if it's in that area, the bottom one is still pushed out, but the top one is not. So when it goes to that position, it can only grab the top one and the bottom one drops. So it can drop both of them individually. Yeah, so we also have this uh, amazing contraption. Um, so originally, can I have the other tape? Measure? Originally we had this guy, which we, com which we did by completely taking apart a tape measure and then putting it on a spool. And we thought that we'd be able to just spin, it, spin the spool and then to extend and retract the tape measure. But uh, what happened is it just kind of unwound the tape measure instead of actually extending it that much. And now this is pretty much just unusable because it's uh, all bound up in here. So instead, we kind of realized that we need the, sp the spring for this in the tape measure. <laughs> so and so we, we changed to tape zip tying uh, the tape measure to this contraption, which has two wheels connected to a motor. And they put uh, force on this uh, tape measure. And whenever you spin the motor, it extends out the tape measure. Can you bring it back in? And you can also use it to retract it. And it's pretty quick. And it's also a lot stronger than this other one because this, this tape measure is really small, so it's easy to just push in and bend around. Can you yeah, extend this a little? Can you go really far out. Yeah, can you stun me? Stop <laughs> before you munch my fingers. It's a lot harder to like break in. It takes a lot more force. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, we also, I also worked on a winch system. Where did my hook go? Oh, here it is. I worked on a winch system which used this hook, which we attached to a flexible piece, and it would pull down on. The flexible piece would just raise up the hook so that we could hook it onto the thing, and we've we've taken it apart. But so it would hook onto the thing, and then we also had the string connected to the hook, so that way we could pull on the string, and then that would pull down the hook, and the flexible part would just flex away because it's obviously flexible, and then the hook would just obviously hang on to the part and then we just pull down with this which we have connected directly to the 30 rpm motor so that worked pretty well for picking up the robot the problem was that since it's a string we had absolutely no uh way of stabilizing the robot so it just completely went sideways when we tried it other than other than that it worked fine so but we also couldn't raise or lower the hook so it was too short so what we what we thought about doing was one thought that we have is that we can put the hook on the tape measure and then we can extend the hook with the tape measure. And we we're initially going to try to uh, have just have the tape measure pull itself back in and see if we could lift the robot with that. But we tried some pr uh, testing with it and this can lift itself, but it's pretty heavy by itself. And if you had like hardly any more weight, it's just not going to be able to lift it any, anything else because uh, the wheels slip on the tape measure. So it just doesn't have enough grip there. But we, we can still put the hook on the tape measure and then pull it down with the paracord if we need to. All right, that's all I had to talk about. But yeah, we decided to chest out the holonomic chassis due to the fact that it is a lot lower to the ground. Um, this allows for more room from the chassis to the actual trusses. We could then fit more stuff and be able to not sacrifice, never, not easy, easily navigate the field. Yeah. Um, we still tested the mechanism, just know about how fast that would be as well compared to the holonomic. As we have noticed, speed is a lot, or speed is of high priority 
with the pixels as you have to go from one corner of the field to the other. So faster cycle times means more pixels on the backdrop. So more points. Anything else to say? We did add Viper slides to our mechanism chassis. We were oh, planning yeah, on testing funny. those out to lift up the robot. We never did get up, get to work in that. Um, so our next steps to, with all this information is probably continuing it in a sprint-based process in our, our agile development system. Um, oh, we, get, we also got the field all assembled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, do it. <laughs>